Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at a game from 1905 between Carl Schlechter and John Walter. And now, why am I going back so far in history? Because the game is very instructive. We're going to look at a stone wall here. D4, D5, C4, E6, Knight C3, and F5. For those of you who don't know who Schlechter was, uh, he played for the World Championship against Emmanuel Lasker. And uh, unfortunately for him, uh, it ended up in a draw and the champion uh, retained uh, his title. But he was a very strong player and known for his solidity uh, in his chest for many years. And there's uh, a few variations named after him. I think the Schlechter variation actually in the Slav defense is named after him. Uh, anyway, we go on to this Stonewall defense. So Carl Schlechter is white here. John Walter is black pieces. Okay. So, of course, for you newbies out there, uh, this pawn formation, which uh, black has here, um, well, once completed with the move C6, uh, is known uh, as a stonewall defense. And it's also possible for white to set up the uh, position uh, with the colors in reverse. All right. And um, the main purpose uh, here is that black wants to create a strong outpost uh, for his knight on E4. And also uh, the possible attack on the king side. Uh, and this occurs sometimes with moves like knight f6, and knight comes to e4, you know, black will castle, bishop will be here on d6. Sometimes you'll have this pawn storm with, a, you know, h6, g5, uh, etc. Alright. One of the weaknesses of this formation is that you have this bishop on c8, the light square bishop. Uh, cannot get out into the game because of the pawns being all fixed on light squares. This is usually a distinguishing feature uh, in Stonewall games. Now, with the colors reversed, it's a little better for white because um, many times he can get his bishop out, his so-called bad bishop, outside of that uh, pawn chain and at least uh, trade it off or make it otherwise useful before uh, completing the, uh, the Stonewall. So the game continued, knight f3 from Schlechter, c6, so there's your uh, stonewall formation. Notice the highlighted red square, because that is a weak square in a uh, black formation as a result. And so Schlechter, playing in this classical style, immediately uh, starts to fight for the e5 square. Notice the influence already in the center, this pawn here, bishop and knight. Other moves are you know, less effective, yeah. say for instance e3. Bishop d6, bishop d2, knight f6, queen c2, knight e4, bishop e2, and knight d7. All right, and, and black is, um, you know, doesn't have as much pressure. And soon he'll be able to play e5 under the right circumstances. Bishop f4 puts much more pressure on that square. Bishop d6, so I just spoke to you about the bad bishop here. So here it seems um, against you know, uh, principles to trade off his then good bishop, okay? But the idea here is clear. Black wants to trade, uh, wants to provoke uh, white into trading off bishops so that he can uh, play the move queen d6 here with the idea of playing knight to uh, d7 followed by e5, okay? So he's fighting for the e5 square. However, Selector just simply plays e3. All right, so of course after bishop takes f4, then you have uh, e4 still uh, blockaded. Excuse me, e5 still uh, under control, and the e6, the backward e6 pawn is exposed. So the battle continues. Knight f6, bishop d3, queen c7. Again, hoping uh, by this threat to win a pawn that he can uh, provoke white into trading on. Um, D6. Selector holds on to the idea and plays G3. Castles, castles, and knight E4. All right. Now, 
it's a good post for the night. It's fantastic. All right. But it's not necessarily a strong post for the night. Why do I say that? Because the night can always be kicked out at some point by F3. Note the difference that in Black's position, there is no F6 to kick the uh, white pieces out. Conversely, though, Black, uh, excuse me, White always has F3 up his sleeve if he needs it. Now, Queen B3. All right, what's the idea here? Um, White is uh, threatening to play uh, C takes D5. And there's, um, now, let's show you here. So, for example, if Knight D7 here, then C takes D5. And let's just make some dubious uh, continuations here. So, if C takes D5, then you have Knight B5 here. So you can already see that's disastrous. And the bishop on prees, you got rook, you got rook ac1 coming. And if the move e takes d5, knight d5 is is strong. d5, c takes d5, bishop takes. Notice the pin here. On this diagonal. Queen takes. Rook f7. Knight g5. And uh, black. Is in a world of trouble. So already uh, threats appear on the uh, horizon here. If d takes c4. The stone wall is not a stone wall any any longer after after this uh, pawn you know it's uh after this pawn is traded against the spirit of the stone wall you hardly ever see that move played but in this case it will be an error with tremendous pressure on this e6 pawn here so after queen b3 black decides to get off of that uh, diagonal there and plays the move king h8. Rook hc1. Lining up with the queen on c7. And now. Because of this threat. Of c takes d4. Right. Because now you have c takes d4. With the threat of knight b5. This. Um, this causes. Uh, Black to sort of lose. Lose uh, his uh, nerve here. And he trades off. On f4. So. He, he tried to provoke black into trading on d6 so he can get e5 in, but um, eventually white wins the battle of wills here, and bishop takes f4 is played. Right. This favors white here because now this pawn on e6, which is backwards, is now exposed. Right, Not immediately, since you do have the knight here still, but remember we always have f3 at some point to kick the knight away. And it's going to be very difficult to liberate this pawn from its backward status now. <clears throat> Which in turn affects this bishop, of course, continuously. Queen f7 is played. And now knight e5. Again, we spoke about this contrast earlier, but to bring it up again, notice how... Um, Black does not have a pawn on f6 to be able to uh, kick the knight out here, but white has f3. All right. <clears throat> so for white, this is a strong square, a permanently strong square. Okay. So again, <clears throat> old game but goody, <clears throat> oldie but goody. This is a classical uh, stonewall position, right? Where black has a, a weak white bishop excuse me weak light squared bishop okay and then he's also weak on the dark squares because his good bishop right the dark square bishop was traded off uh, earlier okay queen e7 all right now here's an interesting point in the game schlechter played bishop takes e4 here now, 
you would expect Schlechter to play the move F3 that we've been talking about, right? In order to achieve the uh, control over the E-file. All right, so the exchange seems a little, you know, a little bizarro, at, you know, when you first look at it, okay? However, you'll see that white is achieving the aim of one clearing this E-file, right? Which in turn allows him to put tremendous pressure uh, on E6, all right? So let's watch, let's see his plan, okay? This is a good plan to uh, you know to to add into your to your game so he takes with the bishop bishop takes e4 f takes e4 and now he plays f3 okay so he's getting rid of his doubled pawns also by doing doing it like this right instead of just playing the move f3 which is playable you know so for instance after um sorry about that Let's say after f3, well, first of all, knight d2, but forgive me, I'm just trying to trying to illustrate the point. Let's say after um, knight takes c3, and let's just keep everything clean. Queen takes c3, right? You have the e-file is all clear, but notice the, the pawns are still doubled, right? And this pawn is not as useful here because white uh, does not really have to worry about a, a piece coming uh, here to e4 as of yet. Anyway, I mean, eventually maybe this knight will work its way around. So then f3 will be useful again. But Schlechter's plan, after bishop takes e4, f takes, and then f3. I like how he gets rid of the double pawn. And now it's just white. Uh, who who was left uh, with the weakness, and now he's taking over e4 uh, strategically. So even if a knight did come here, he would just lose material. All right, it's no longer a stonewall position. The stonewall has now been uh, broken down. Queen c7, queen a3, brilliant move. Not only threatening the rook here, but just taking over the dark squares. Right, it it's, it makes blacks difficult. Uh, excuse me, black's development very difficult. King g8. Rook takes f3. Knight a6. b3. And now the idea here is uh, the queen wants to come back uh, to the king side. Queen d8, and now c5. So you can see the idea. So basically, um, black, uh, excuse me, white is clamping down on his position against keeping this bishop just very, very bad. And it's like a domino effect. You know, you have one uh, thing wrong, and then it kind of causes other things to go wrong also. So the main issue is uh, these pawns being all on the same squares, which affects this bishop which affects this rook, etc. So, with the idea of b3, the idea is to come back out to the king side and close this this up, you know, just continuing the uh, the malady in the black position. Queen d8, c5, now knight c7. Queen b2, bishop d7, and now queen c2, queen e7, um, the idea here would have been bishop, bishop to e8, right? Trying to get this bishop out, okay? Even if it's just a g6 at some point. Queen e7, rook e f1, and now selector plays rook a e8 again. Uh, bishop e8, okay? You got to get this bishop out at some time. At some point, g4, of course, but <clears throat> then rook f6, and then at least with the idea of trying to get this in again. All right, rook a e8, g4, bishop c8, 
and now rook h3 attacking the king as you can see and what this does is it forces black to uh, further uh, weaken itself on the king side g6 and now b4 very powerful move and it just shows you the level of the understanding that these old masters had so he's attacking on the other uh on the king side and all of a sudden he does this move uh b b4 right so it's like what's going on you know he's he's carrying attacks over the whole board and the thing is is that since the cent the center is closed you know white has this advantage is in space okay He's just uh, preparing breakthroughs all over. So he can, um, since the center is closed, one of the principles is that you can't take the attack to the flanks. So he's just attacking on both sides of the board. Because he has a, a space advantage on the king side, center, and queen side. Alright, so he's just hitting white and diff uh, hitting black in different sectors of the board. Alright, to um, stretch his defenses out. So that he won't be able to defend everything at once. Alright. Another player that used to play like this is a Bobogul Yubov that would attack on, uh, you know, different uh, wings, uh, uh, opposite wings. All right. Okay. So the idea, right, to make a long story short, is basically you attack on the opposite sides of the board and then you carry out your final attack on whichever side is uh, weaker, so to speak. Right, so if you have, if your opponent goes all out in his defense of the king side, okay, then you just finish your attack on the queen side. If he defends the queen side really strong, then you finish your attack over on the king side. All right, so it's like you create weaknesses on both sides. Eventually, he won't be able to defend both of them. All right, queen f6, rook h f3, rook e7. A4, see, so he goes back over there, A6, Knight D1, very powerful uh, move right there, and as you can see, white wants to uh, advance the uh, G pawn, all right, and what that does is it kind of solidifies his grip on the F6 and H6 squares, all right, then you bring the Knight to E3, then the G4, and of course, then you can have the Knight sitting pretty on one of these squares right here, okay. Rook g7, knight e3, queen e7, and now g5. And of course, you can see again the illustration of where those where the knights would like to be. And notice again, look at the pawns, the white, the uh, all the pawns on the white squares. So again, classical Stonewall. That's why I wanted to show you this game, the the classical uh, play for white in the Stonewall. I mean, you can't really get any better than this game right here. Terrible bishop. These are all the things you don't want is black in, in, this, in the stonewall. Game continue. Bishop d7. Knight uh, to g4. Bishop e8. It's funny how he finally decides to move the bishop. Uh, but it's, it's too late. Knight h6. King h8. Queen e2. Using the e5 square as basically like a train station. So one piece comes out. Another piece comes in. Of course, the queen having the properties of the rook and bishop. Queen on e5 is a great square. Notice how black is not able to defend the dark squares. Queen d8. Knight eg4. Uh, struggle continues. Bishop d7. Queen e5. Knight e8, rook h3. So you see this tremendous buildup over here on the queen side. Excuse me, on the king side. So queen c7. Um, if queen e7, then um, there's several moves here, but queen b8 is possible here. And say if e5, then just simply queen takes e5. Bishop takes, knight takes, queen d7, f5, and that's just a sample 
variation for black, excuse me, for white where it just be winning. But there's other moves here also. Usually when in positions like this, there's like three or four winning uh, continuations. So queen c7 was played. Knight f6. All right. So, I mean, white can't really improve any more <laughs> his, his pieces anymore, right? All, all of the pieces are, uh, you know, sitting on those dark squares, you know. Queen takes e5. F takes e5. So there's really no relief here either, is there, for black? Rook e7. Rook hf3. This forces black to exchange on f6. All right. Okay. Because soon mate will be happening after uh, uh, white exchanging. So if black doesn't exchange, white will exchange and eventually force mate on f8 by getting his rook back here on the back rank. So knight takes f6. So let me just show you instead of telling you. So bishop c8, for example. Knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, takes. Then the rook comes to f7. And there's no way to stop the uh, the mate without losing uh, material. Okay. This is why black is forced to take. So knight takes f6, rook takes, rook takes, g takes. Okay. So now white has access to the e5 square once again for his pieces. Okay. And again, another thing to point out is you have this classic uh, scenario in the stone wall again. When it goes right for white is you have good knight versus bad bishop. Another uh, scenario that you want to strive for in these positions. Knight f7. I'm sorry. Rook e8. Knight f7. Check. King g8. Knight e5. So you see the domination theme here. Also the um, move f7 is threatened. Rook d8. King g2. Alright. So there's so many things to take from this game. I would just watch the video over. Because even when I try to recap I'll probably forget something. Um, but this is like a, a model a model game right here. Um, the first the thing I want to say here about this ending is just notice how before the breakthrough comes, how uh, White doesn't rush. He's gonna move his king, right? As close, you know, as close as possible up the board before um, moving moving, um, you know, his pawns, right? So this is a a classical way of just you know um, exploiting the space advantage, right? There's no need to to rush and start pushing getting crazy with the pawn pushes and all the stuff like that so he, he plays king uh f8 h4 bishop e8 okay so the bishop is basically a defensive um piece right now of course no attacking possibilities and the idea with that move is just to stop you know for now anyway this move h4 h5 all right so that's why the bishop uh comes to e8 all right, and now as you can see in this end game, you can see the reason why uh, White attacked on the queen side earlier. Remember, I was talking about switching flanks. This is this is why, because now Black is not going to be able to defend both sides of the board. So now this bishop is over here trying to stop this, and now Selector will rely on his preparations that he made on the other side of the board. So bishop f7, king f4. Again, notice where the king is being brought. King e8, rook b1. So now the breakthrough on b5 is prepared. King f8, how are you going to stop it? You can't. b5. All right. And here, black uh, actually resigned. Okay. As he realized that he can't defend on both sides of the board. So, for example... The game could have went A takes, A takes, Bishop E8 takes, uh, we take with the Bishop, takes, takes, 
king e5 and the game the game is over the rook is the rook is coming to the seventh rank or the eighth rank uh there's no no legitimate way to stop anything king king f7 you know rook the rook is coming here this pawn is dropping so um resignation uh by black is definitely by no means premature so just to recap real quick i mean there's many things we learned uh, again, principle of two weaknesses. Notice how black, uh, excuse me, white with the big space advantage played on both sides of the board. Um, he moved his king up in the end game right before, um, you know, he didn't rush. Okay, uh, what else? We saw the principle of the good knight versus the bad knight, as you can see, excuse me, good knight versus bad bishop, as you see with this knight here versus, versus uh, the bad bishop. Uh, we saw, oh yeah, earlier in the game, we saw uh, the uh, idea of how white had the, always had the ability to play the move F3 at some point. So even though E4 was a strong square for the black pieces, right, it wasn't a stable square for the black pieces. Where conversely, white was able to use E5 throughout the game, right, because black never had a move like F6 to force uh, black's pieces out of uh, e5 um, what else did we learn the the oh yeah by creating a stone wall the uh, c8 bishop is uh a, you know can become a tremendous liability in, in the game as we saw this bishop just had uh, absolutely no uh, activity uh, in the game another thing we learned was that um That sometimes black will try to trade off his good bishop, okay, in order to uh, enforce e5. And we saw the strategy of white, okay, just clamping down on the e5 square and absolutely would not uh, uh, trade until uh, black kind of felt the pressure and traded on e4 himself. And uh, finally, I want to mention also is that. White also has an idea of putting pressure on down the e-file once the e-file is cleared. So this idea of clearing the e-file, let's get rid of that pawn, clearing the e-file with the pressure uh, on this this pawn also and keeping it, it backward. Okay, so th that's the basic recap there. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please like, comment, subscribe, check my links below. Um, please uh, donate to my channel uh, and also there's uh, products related to this particular opening so I'll have links to you know Dutch defense uh, videos DVDs and also uh, books if people you know you still read books and um, you know your comments are welcome and uh, I'll see you I'll see you guys on the next video